We had to wait for two years plus a lightning delay to have a postseason in the Colonial Athletic Association. But by this time on Sunday, a winner will emerge with an NCAA tournament bid here in Harrisonburg, Virginia. This is the 2021 CAA Lacrosse Championship presented by Primus here on LAX Sports Network. Hello, everybody, and welcome to semifinal day here in the CAA. Alongside three-time gold medalist Kelly Berger, I am Tom Eschen. And Kelly, one of four teams we're set up with here tonight. We've got top seed Drexel, the new kid on the block, the two seed JMU, three-time defending champion, the three seed Hofstra with Alyssa Perella, one of the best players in the country, and then Towson, they've got nothing to lose. I mean, this is going to be fun. Yeah, and you know, they all have their own stories. They're all very excited to be there, and I'm excited to watch them. Yeah, absolutely. We start with the top seed, Drexel, taking on Towson. Drexel at 12-1 and one this year. Towson coming off of that play-in game where they dominated Elon. They'll be a, a tough task to handle, as will Drexel, of course, as we know. First time in program history. They've got the coach in the year in the CAA and Joe Batcher. They've got the player of the year in Carson Harris. And then they got Zoe Bennett, the goalie of the year in the CAA as well. What? It's pretty exciting for any program to get that. And uh, quite honestly, that has to give the momentum going into this. Yeah, absolutely. And we look over what they've done this year. Carson Harris, those 55 goals, six assists. She and the rest of this group, they have just clicked all season long. Yeah, she's the CAA player of the year. And I want her to play like that. She's so dominant on the offensive end that, like you said, the offense just clicks and she has this been waiting for this moment so I really hope she enjoys it and she takes it on and Zoe Bennett here we see some of the saves she's made this year a 10-3-1 goals against average her save percentage the best she's ever had just sort of rounds out I mean there's a very well-rounded squad these Drax Dragons at their top 10 in the nation Zoe makes this position look fun one that we don't always want to play right and <laughs> she gets after it from a very good group of goalies in this whole tournament um, she's out on top. So you look now at the Towson Tigers, who lost their last five regular season games, but they looked like a different team against Elon on Wednesday. We have to admit that CAA Rookie of the Year Blair Perry makes things go for them. She's been excellent all season long. A, a sophomore in title, but the first full season she's gotten here in the CAA. Yeah, it's pretty crazy to call her a rookie because she does not play like that at all. When we asked Sonia, what do you need from her? She says, we just need her. And that's pretty uh, pretty in, in, incredible as a rookie, you know, to, for your coach to say that about you. And we had about an hour and 15 minute lightning delay. There's no lightning anymore, Kelly. Where did it go? I mean, the sun is shining, but it is a windy day. How do you think the delay will impact both teams? You know, it's crazy when there's a delay in the locker room. You got to find out, you know, what your team is all about. You keep each other busy, but you don't want to let out too much energy. It's 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 tough, but we'll see what team kind of comes out on top with it. We take a look here. We mentioned Zoe Bennett on the side of the Drexel Dragons. It's Carly Merlo in the cage for the Towson Tigers here today, making her 14th start in the season. 10 and a half goals against the average 45.9% saves. That is both those marks, top 30 in the NCAA. And she'll get to go up against this Drexel Dragons offense, which is third in the nation, 17 goals per game. As you can see in the center circle, both sides ready and locked to go. The CAA Women's Lacrosse Championship presented by Primus is set to go too. The first draw control going the way of the black shirts and a whistle there in the middle. And we are off and running here today. You can see the, the wind is, you can hear it whipping in the camera right now, Callie. I mean, just seeing the scramble here as well. You know, what impact does that make on, on these sticks and these passes and whatnot? Yeah, well, first things first, there's a lot of jitters. You know, it's the opening minutes of a big game for both of these teams. And then you have that delay and then you have, you know, the wind and who, who knows what else. It, it, you have to kind of take the first 10 minutes just to try and settle in, feel the ball, get some touches and uh, feel out what the game's going to play out to be like. This is our first look here at the Drexel Dragons on offense. So talented and so deep. We mentioned Carson Harris, of course, who does a, a little bit of everything in addition to scoring, but Colleen Grady, first in the CAA in points per game 
fifth in the NCAA this year. She's got 33 assists as well. That ties a single season program record, number five in white. Something to look for, as is the one with the ball right now, Corinne Bednarik, who gets inside and she shoots, and a first shot stopped by Merlo. I mean, it, it, it always is hard to take the first shot, uh, but I think it's harder to make the first save as a goalie, and that's got to feel good for Carly to get that first save under her belt, kind of just exhale a little bit and uh, send it down the, down the other side of the field. Ball on the grass a lot here on this end of the turf, and once again, it's Drexel who comes out with that ground ball. Second in the CAA in ground balls this year for them, 18.15 this season. You see that Drexel really likes to push the transition. They can run, they have a lot of speed, and they thread the needle really well. We'll see if Tassin can stop that here and slow that momentum. That is Bednarik. Second time is the charm for the sophomore on the CAA All-Rookie Team. 25th goal of the season. Drexel strikes first. They like this transition. They like to catch teams off guard. Uh, you can see here that her head is up the entire time. She makes that easy switch a little hitch dodge, and Towson just doesn't really pick her up, and she just says, okay, well, I'll let it rip, and she did, and it made it count. These two teams met twice during the regular season, all within the last few weeks here. Both were double-digit Drexel wins, and Towson, of course, we mentioned it at the top, they've got nothing to lose here, but Drexel's been sort of this machine now. They only have one loss. That was the Loyola way back on March 14th and Towson trying to slow down. It seems like their philosophy is going to be to slow down that transition. They just haven't been able to get set on offense so far here, Kelly. Yeah, the, the philosophy was if we can keep the ball in our stick, they won't have the ball, so they can't score, which is, you know, it sounds, well, of course, that's what you want to happen. But that is a, that's something you need to really keep in mind and kind of drain into the players that that's what you want to happen. So we'll see if they can do that. That was Carson Harris picking up that draw control there in the middle. Number one here on the team. First in the CAA and draw controls per game as well for the player of the year. So she doesn't just score, folks. She, she does it all. 72 of them make it 73 now. Here's Grady. Always surveying, looking for an open player. And she'll take her own shot, too. Her. Yeah, her head is always up. That stopped again, though. That shot, first one of the day for Harris, stopped by Merlo. A couple early saves here for Carly Merlo, then inside the cross, midseason All American. And now let's see if Towson gets settled on offense here. Lindsey Marshall, an All CA rookie team member, just a true freshman here. 32 goals, 15 assists for 47 points. And then, as we mentioned, Blair Perry their go-to player on the offensive end. Yeah, I almost feel like these rookies don't even play like rookies because we don't even know what year they are at this point. And it just is a, a little bit, you know, unclear. So they just have to step into their role and play like they've been playing all their lives. It's, you know, I say it's just another game. It's not just another game, but try and keep that in mind as they are playing in these high intense games and not necessarily play like a freshman. Shelby Stack went all the way from behind and then finds in front for the score. Uh, answer here from the Towson team, Abby Mona, the graduate senior, makes it one to one. We talked about these Towson players keeping their head up. They have a lot of threats on this offensive end. Being able to catch that inside and control it and then change the level of your stick is not easy. And then on top of it, you have about three players in your way always when Drexel is trying to defend that. So that was a really good finish, really good composure on that offensive end. And look at this, we got a game. A nice response there for Towson. That was really their first offensive possession of the day after they had a couple of turnovers to start. And a good start for Abby Mona as well, her sixth goal of the year. So not the usual likely source here, but a good start for the Tigers in response to Drexel. and wins yet another draw control. They were even back on the 23rd of April in the circle, 13-13, despite losing 17-7 to the Tigers. So that, that was something that they could use. And we heard Sonia LaMonica, their head coach of the Tigers in her 12th season, talk about that. Yeah, you took the words out of my mouth. She talked a lot about draw controls and getting control 
from the draw and not getting in that track meet off of the draw control and kind of settling it down, really taking time during the possession. Marshall took a peek. Now they work it around the top once again, inside the critical scoring area. Tough catch in the middle there for Thornton. Goes over the top of her stick, and they turn it over. Monica has won four CEA titles here with the Tigers over the last 10 years or so. For Jill Batchelor and the Drexel Dragons, her third season has really brought this program from not being in this tournament to being in this tournament. And in just a couple of years, it's been an impressive turnaround. Yeah, it's pretty, it's a very unique story, you know, to, to not be you know, at the top whatsoever, and then now to be the leader. It's it's really cool, and um, each time I talk to her about it, 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 she's excited, and she gets me excited for them. Another shot there in the middle, stopped by Merlot. That was Lucy Schneider, it's another name for this Drexel Dragons team we've heard an awful lot this year, first team all CEA player, but once again, Merlot making another save. Merlo, a player who last year, we know it was a shortened season, had to come on the scene late as they had some goalies just transfer out or leave the program. And she, as a freshman, came on the scene last year and was pressed into duty, had 12 saves in their game against Loyola last season, and really has had this job for the most part all season long. Thornton looking into the middle. That pass just a little bit too far for Marshall and up and running the other way. This is Rachel Warden. And here's where the Drexel Dragons are very dangerous. They're in transition, they can thread the needle, they keep their heads up, and they're fast. What a move, what a play by Jamie Schneidereth. She, she was the one who picked up the ground ball, ran the field, and scores the three-time captain. 2-1, Dragons. On cue here, I mean, unforced turnover by Towson, something that I'm sure Towson wants to have back, especially after a goal. But we can see that they are running gun team. Drexel has their head up. Carson here has her head up. She knows, she sees the play. She feeds it right back. Good control here, little bobble, and a, an, an awesome finish. I mean, just, it, that's what good lacrosse is. Good speed lacrosse. I love to see it. The 18th of the season for Schneiderith, part of those Schneiderith quadruplets, all playing Division One lacrosse at the same time alongside her sister Lucy here at Drexel. Maggie plays for Johns Hopkins, Georgia at UAlbany. You can see the, the camaraderie on this team, and it starts with the sisters for the Dragons. There's plenty of those on Towson's side too, but this time working out for the Schneideriths. Whistle as Towson gets yet another draw control. They've won three of the four so far here today. They've also turned it over three times. So there's there's the Drexel lead right there in the stats. That is something else that Sonia talked about. You know, she wanted them to limit the uncaused turnovers, just the feeds inside or the bobbles. Um, it, it, that That's just super frustrating. Yeah, she said discipline was the word I think she used uh, a few times. And they said they used that against Elon, a game in which they really sort of exhaled after the five-game losing streak to end the regular season. A 16-6 win over Elon on Wednesday. I mean, that was a, a big statement they made and, and got that sort of the rust off, if you will, from that regular season too. Our, our first whistle of the day and our first free position of the day as well here coming the way for Towson. Yeah, this is a three second call and you got to be careful when you play a zone that if the official starts to get happy with a three second call, it can really hurt you because you get in, you know, eight meter over and over, you give that up over and over again. So you got to keep your feet out of that eight meter if you are not marking a player. That was a high stick check. Perry works her way inside to the right side, gets it taken away on the way in. Thought McHugh got her stick in there. McHugh remains in there and guess who comes out with it? Carson Harris. Said she does it all. She came in tied for first on the team in ground balls as well. <laughs> foul there in transition. Sometimes you almost see that like in basketball, the clear path foul where you see a foul to stop the transition opportunity. You felt like that could have been what Towson was even trying to do there. Just the sort of slow Drexel down at this point. 
Yeah, you almost wonder if that's part of the game plan, you know, and, and not a not a dangerous foul, just something to just slow them down a little bit, get our get their defense back into position. Harris walks in and scores her first of the day. Drexel takes a 3-1 lead. Goal number 56 of the season. That is a school record. CAA Player of the Year, you have to send two, three people to her early. You give her space, you let her hands be free. She is going to goal as she should, and she knows how to finish, and that was a great finish. Nice and low, you know, with all of her speed going forward. She'll do that to you all day if you let her. She's got at least four goals in her last six games, so she has picked her play up as the season has gone on. In the last game against Towson, she had four goals, four ground balls, and five draw controls. She had seven goals against Towson back on April 13th, so she is a thorn in their side. She's been a thorn in the sides of a lot of defenses here in the CEA. So 3-1 Drexel here, just about eight minutes in. In the most recent game on the 23rd of April, Drexel led 7 to 2 at the half. They went on to win 17 to 7. The first game was a little bit closer, and Drexel went on a big run, and that's what propelled them to that 12th goal victory. Nikki Sleewak, the Maryland transfer, had two goals and an assist against Elon. She's another player to watch for the Tigers. Number 34, and she gets it now behind the cage. I think that's a thing with both of these teams. You know, they all have so many threats. You just rallied off a couple different players. It, anybody can do the job if you let them. So it has to be good, solid team defense and then good, solid team offense on both sides. Here's Perry finding a win. Now back out to Thornton. Perry again, looking for a slice in that zone, back to Thornton and scores. Carey Thornton, the junior from Long Island, gets on the board, it's three to two. You see here that they find the breakdown of the defense, you know, they, they pull two defenders. There's not a second slide there. She slips inside, catch and finish. That's a really good read on Bree's part. And uh, you know, you got to have a finish after a good read and they did that. So they're they're hanging in. Yeah, Thornton coming off a game against Elon in which she scored three goals with three ground balls as well. She's now up to 16 goals this season. So she's another one of those players who have come along as a junior on this Towson team. And you've seen her do some good things over the years, and now this, this is a big moment for her and working with the sophomore Perry quite well. So far, the Tigers have won four of the five draws. It's Dietzel. Looks like Dietzel can't really make out the number from here. Of course, we're, <laughs> they continue to set, and it seems like that's taken longer here today than we're no, normally accustomed to, right? <laughs> I mean, it took a yeah, few moments. Yeah, it was there's some official, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's some officials that are very precise of how they want it, and those sticks sometimes just don't cooperate. But now we had the false start there. Lindsey Marshall and Haley Simpson give us a good look at the numbers. You can see the height advantage, and that's something that the freshman Marshall brings to this Towson Tigers team, something that Sonia LaMonica said they really haven't had in the past on the circle before. Yeah, 88 draw controls for Marshall this season. That's third in a season in Towson history. Two more, and she ties Natalie Salmonte. And she's the one who was called for the foul there. Harris picks it up quickly out to Bednarik. Close play inside, stopped there by Merlo. Grady took a shot, and once again, Merlo closing the door. Yeah, now 
we we heard that she doesn't want to go in a track meet here so we'll see if they push the ball down take it on the offensive end and then just slow it down try and gain possession they they want to make the direct defense tired and take some time out of those offensive threats on the Drexel end. Nice job by Sammy Chenoweth there with the clear first team all CAA player for the Towson Tigers. Caused turnover artists usually that time working in the clearing game, which Towson does as good as anybody. Three to two here, Towson looking to tie. There's Marshall. 10 minutes in, and once again, Harris picks up the GB. Here she comes the other way, this time from the right side. Normally we see her from the left side, but she's gonna weave her way in, working it into the middle, the low shot scores, Bednarik again. Bednarik's and second of the day, go ahead, Kelly. And that started with Carson, uh, the speed and the head up, uh, creating something in an all out, even play, man to man. She created the slide, and she was easily able to do it. Drexel leading 4-2. to two. We'll be right back here on LAC Sports Network. Welcome back to the CAA Women's Lacrosse Championship presented by Primus. Alongside Kelly Berger, I am Tom Eschen on the call. Thanks for joining us here today for semifinal number one of two of the day. This is Drexel and Towson. Drexel the one seed, Towson the five de facto seed coming into the day. Meanwhile, our second game of the night coming up later, it's gonna be JMU Hofstra. JMU the host, as you can see here on the field, taking on the three seed Hofstra. That should be a good battle as well. But so far, Drexel with a 4-2 lead. They're the top seed for a reason, and you're seeing why right now. Yeah, and, and thinking back on those goals, uh, I, I would say three out of the four of them were created from transition. Uh, so I'm sure that's something that Towson might talk about come halftime. Um, but it, it's definitely, you know, slow the ball down and you might create something totally different when Towson has been dominating the possession time, I would say, wouldn't you, Tom? Yeah, and that they've been killed by turnovers. They've got five of them today, 13.3 turnovers per game. That is fifth in the CAA, which obviously puts them towards the bottom. And you're seeing that come out here as they've done pretty well in the draw. They just can't keep the ball. Perry working from goal line extended. Now she works along the fan. Her stack had an assist to start the game. And the whistle has been blown. There's the three fingers. That's how you know it was a three seconds there on the defense. So we'll get a free position coming up out of that. I will tell you, if Towson can capitalize on these eight meters, it is an entirely different game. If these referees want to call that three seconds if they're not marked in and they're looking for that, it could change the ball game. And they will defer out. Sliwak now works it around. Perry would work her way in and there is a shooting space. So it'll be Perry who does a good job here in the free position. She is number two in the NCAA with free position goals per game. 29 of 49 this year. Here she goes, works from the left side and scores four to three. Perry on the board for the first time today. A goal to go along with her assist. That's number 54 this season. I would say she's familiar with that eight meter. Uh, she's ready, she's set, and she explodes off that line, getting her hands free. And she just sneaks that ball right by the goalie. And, and when she tosses that stick, she just says, okay, we got it, finally, one goal game. Uh, rookie of the year, not rookie of the year, it doesn't matter. She's here, she's ready to help her team do whatever she can to help them win. And that is the first goal she has scored against Drexel all year. They played two games. She was held scoreless in both of those games. The only games all season long where she hasn't been on the score sheet. So I think that might have been a part of that stick drop, Kelly, and just saying, okay, uh, yeah. let's go. <laughs> I was just gonna say that, you know, maybe tossing her stick was finally like, 
goodness me, finally, Blair. I finally finished that shot because that just has to be in the back of her head. You know, as a good player, she thinks about those things. Yeah, and we talked to Sonya LaMonica about where she is on the field and schematically putting her up front a little bit more in a transition opportunity out of the draw. Stack stopped by Bennett. That was a phenomenal stop. We call that a one on none. And uh, it, it's almost as nerve wracking for the attacker, but the goalie coming at her full speed and she makes that huge stop. That was amazing by Zoe. So we've had a goal from the player of the year in the CAA, a goal from the rookie of the year, and now a great save from the goalie of the year. The, the star's out here in Harrisonburg today. Twelve minutes in, four to three. Drexel getting possession back here in a settled situation. Paris out to Grady. Grady to dodge on the inside. Shot stopped by Merlo again. A whistle there initially. I think someone got their stick there towards the crease. So it'll be Merlo to clear. We haven't seen many settled opportunities by Drexel, and you can tell they are focusing on their go-to players, but they, they move the ball very well. They keep their head up, and they, they read those slides. Uh, I think they they snuck by without getting one there. But here we go. Towson once again with a chance to tie. And Kelly, I mean, they, they lost their last five regular season games, and we've been told that's their different team now. New, they, they have nothing to lose. They look maybe a little different to you here today? Yeah, I think, you know, they really took to heart new season. They, they took what they learned, they could learn from the past and tried to apply it and uh, just, you know, move forward. That's what you have to do. You, you have to have a short memory a little bit there and just keep pushing through because it, it is a long season, but it's, you get chances to restart. Yeah, and I thought it was interesting what Coach LaMonica said about how they saw a lot of man defenses in the beginning of the year that took a bit of time to sort of work through all the zones they saw once the conference slate started too, and, and adjusting to that with this team. Yeah, it's unique to play against a zone. You have to have unique personnel to understand what, what it takes. It's definitely a different style. So the Towson defense work now. This is Del Tuva. And that shot stopped once again. I think that was Schneider taking the shot once again. There is Merlo. What a first quarter of the game she's had. Yeah, she's seeing the ball well. She's saving him high, she's saving him low. And that's what you, as a goalie, you need those early saves to continue to give you that confidence. And Drexel is second in the nation at shooting percentage. 53.3% of the time they score. I mean, that's really good. Very good, and Carly's saying, not today. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. I mean, one game, that's all it takes, right? <laughs> exactly. Delahaye. Perry again here from the left side. She's dangerous. I think Sleewak from behind the cage here today, a little bit more often, and Perry dodging from the top. She does. She finds her footing. It pops up over the stick of Bennett. We play on. Hey, fakes. 15 now in the possession clock. Good defense there played in the back edge. Warden with a stick in there. And we'll have a late whistle there. Looked like Warden did everything right up until maybe that last stick check. We'll see what the call is. I couldn't read lips or understand the hand motion there, so I don't think that was any anything official, but there was a whistle. Looks like the possession clock staying the same here at seven. Yeah, I couldn't tell if he was given a card there or if he was just talking about the possession clock. What a feed and what a finish with a short clock. Thornton gets the goal, her second of the day. Well, they knew they didn't have a ton of time, so they didn't waste it. Uh, driving with your head up and really threading the needle there. I, I mean, you have, what, seven seconds on that shooting clock? Take that chance, find a body in there, and uh, put it away. Catch people off guard. That was very well done by Thornton. 
and so, way to utilize that clock. Towson ties the game here four to four. Nikki Sleewak with the assists, a player that makes sort of this offense go at times. She's done a good job of that so far. So far. And we saw Towson and maybe a bit of an advantage, you could say, of just being able to get their feet wet in tournament play against Elon just two days ago, a 16 to 6 win. And that's when you really felt like, wow, okay, this is the Towson team we've been waiting for all season long. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes, you know, getting that chance to play a game instead of just sit and wait can sometimes even be better. And it allows your team to kind of get in the groove of tournament play and, uh, you know, be in that little bubble of just you and your team. And uh, this was a hard fought battle, even though the score was lopsided. It's still a tournament game that they have to show up for. And it's mentally and physically challenging. And they showed up. You almost felt like of all the teams, Towson probably needed that game, right? I mean, before you get into really the semifinal against the top seed, I mean, after losing five straight, a couple of close losses to Hofstra in there, two one-goal losses to Hofstra to end the regular season, they probably needed a game to say, okay, here's what it feels like to win again. Yeah, and no pressure, right? I mean, they weren't expected to win. They were the play-in game. They were, you know, one of those teams that said, you're not really supposed to be here because of what is said on paper about you, but they believe they were supposed to be there. And I think the biggest thing that Sonia continues to talk to us about when we have these calls with her is gratitude. You know, just being thankful that they are there and in the position that they are. And I, I think that's really awesome, just not only in sport, but in life. Absolutely. They, they were 0-4 in their division in CAA play, 9-7 and overall. They did beat Loyola earlier on in the year. Obviously, they're a top-10 team. A 22 RB, RPI. You'll hear that a lot over the next couple of days with the CAA teams. They've got really good RPIs, which means we're going to have multiple CAA teams in the NCAA tournament, just a matter maybe of how many. We know that they're playing for to know for sure that they'll be in. But just so you know, these are competitive teams that played pretty tough schedules. Drexel's, Drexel's RPI is four. I mean, that's fourth in the country, schedule and record combined. So Towson not that much farther away with at 22 of all the teams in the country. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, you never want to put your faith in anybody else's decision. You'd rather just have the automatic bid. But it, it is good to know, and that's really awesome for the CAA as well, just a strong conference all in one. Yeah, I mean, remember for our first conversation, I think it was with Shelly Clays of JMU, she goes, yeah, the conference is just good this year. Like, it's competitive, and <laughs> there's a lot of good young players coming up, and then you've got some of these senior teams like Drexel that are just clicking. Terrace getting another draw control. So finally, Drexel wins one after it had been Towson dominating for the greater portion of this half. So four to four here, halfway through this first half. It's, it's been a good, good half so far. Can't ask for a better one. I mean, four all, and you got, you know, half of the first half played. These teams are both just trying to figure one another out. I'm, I'm on for the ride. Let's do it. It looks like the delay didn't impact either of them too much. The coaches must have done the right stuff with them, Kelly, for that hour and 50 extra hour or so. Oh, the ankle breaker <laughs> into the middle. Schneider with misses almost had a really cool highlight. It is a little slippery. Yeah, it's almost the hardest to figure out what to do with the team during a uh, rain delay. <laughs> do you leave them alone? Do you entertain them? Do you keep them focused? It, it, it's kind of a free-for-all. And a ground ball in the middle there, picked up there by the Tigers. Number 43, Natalie Miller, the graduate student who came over from the University of Maryland. One of three impact transfers for the Towson Tigers in here, in addition to Nikki Sleewak and Olivia Malamphy. Great job done there by Miller on the defensive end, picking up that ground ball after the turnover. It's interesting to watch both of these teams on both ends with the defensive setups. You know, we're, we're seeing here that Drexel's playing a zone and then Towson will be playing a man-to-man. -man. So if you are new to this sport, there's two different, very drastic different ways to play this defensively. And uh, both do very well. And within some of the zones, sometimes you hear about these individual players who sort of find their spot and and stick to it, but they make that impact no matter where they are. It's interesting to see where they're placed near the crease, near the arc, and where they can be most impactful. And there's a cause turnover there on that end. I didn't see who got it, but it was Drexel who comes out with possession. 
there is a method to the madness, as we like to call it, in zone defense. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't always make sense. It was Arden Edgerton, the senior from Manchester by the Sea, Massachusetts, with a cause turnover there, doing a nice job defensively. A beautiful area, Manchester by the Sea, if you saw the film or been to the singing beach where the film was set. We move on. It's it just sounds pretty, let's just say it, that. It does. I mean for in terms of names <laughs> of places to come from, that's one of the best. <laughs> <laughs> Brady hasn't been able to get free so far. Towson's done a good job on her. Picked up almost by the side of the cage there was Dietzel, but Merlo able to cover up just in time. Aaron Williams doing a good job defensively for the Tigers, the junior to Hereford High School. And a foul there moving into the offensive territory and zone for Towson, and they'll play on here. Four to four. You have to, you have to bet that Towson is feeling a little bit more confident. You know, for all, they are, they've had the ball in their sticks a lot. They, they are slowing down the tempo. Um, so their game plan right now is working out for them. Uh, it, it's just, let's see if they can limit those unforced errors. Schleewack. Over to Marshall. Thornton has two goals today. Stack. Lewak looking inside. What a catch and what a finish. Thornton's got three. The hands inside for Carrie Thornton. That moves her up to 18 goals this year. Hat track, hat tricks in back to back games. I would say as as a coach, this is one of these plays where you're saying, no, 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 okay, okay, yeah, it worked out. Because it was just a catch and then a deliver. I mean, I'm not sure if that was meant for Gary Thor Caitlin Thornton, but it worked out, so have at it. You could, you could say it was the only place where she was going to catch it, right? <laughs> Sometimes when you're feeding, exactly. you got to put it where the offensive player is the only person that could have got it, and she did. A couple assists today here for Sliwak, the graduate senior from Maryland. That was a really good handle inside by Carrie, and, it, you know, sometimes it just works out. So Towson takes the lead here, maybe a little bit of momentum. Don't forget, it was 4-2 Drexel. Towson scored the last three, a violation here in the draw. And the Tigers take possession once again. We did speak with Jill Batchelor about being that one seed because this is not something this group, I know they've won games, but not necessarily they're, they've been experienced before. A one seed going into the tournament set was something they talked about for sure, but. I mean, until you get in, it, it's tough to simulate that, you know, mentality-wise and physically, too. The three yeah, they talked call. about the elephant in the room mm. and just kind of just saying, like, we know we're, we've never been here. Let's talk about it. Good to have a good, tough conversation every so often. We're learning a lot about life <laughs> today. <laughs> Communication, it's very important. That's the third three-second call here in the first 20 minutes on Drexel. And once again, it leads to a free position. It's Marshall. Marshall to the right side, into the back of the net, she goes. All CAA rookie team, all CAA first team. She gets on the board her 33rd of the season. She uses her height very well in this eight meter. You know, she gets off that line really quick, but you can tell that she's holding her stick high. She dodges one stick and then uses her height, stands up tall. All too often we see those tall players they shrink down, and I, I like to see that she's using her height to her advantage and finishes hard. So six to four, Towson on a run here, a four nothing run at that with 10-10 to play in this first half, and they look like they they belong here. They're comfortable uh, in this in this situation. And I think Kelly, that that game against Elon for them, you know, you can feel the momentum coming from that and the confidence too. Yeah, and, and you wonder on the other side, is Drexel uncomfortable because they haven't played behind too often this year, if at all. So, you know, how can they kind of make that change? And it'll be interesting to see how both teams react to it. Well, we talked about the on switch, and they're a team that has one. 
It's just a matter of when you turn it on, right? I mean, it's not like it comes off ever, but there is a next gear that we've seen them have in a lot of different situations. But this is the CAA semifinals. Uh, so, I mean, this, this is a very unique situation to, to have that switch to be able to put on, and we'll see if they do that. Alex Wall getting some run in here for the Drexel Dragons. There's Grady, still held off the board. No points for her just yet. She's been manned up by Aaron Williams. Here's Harris working on Del Tuva. Spins out of it to Ben Eric. The pass into the middle. The shot, I think, deflected there. Getting a stick on it was Jamie Schneiderith. You know, Drexel's getting the opportunities. They just are not finishing the opportunity. Something they've done all season long. Harris working on Del Tuba, doing a good job. Out to Schneider, a 30 on the possession clock. The dodge to the cage and the score. Once again, it's Schneider, Jamie. Gets her second of the day. It's 6 5. After the four goal run, it's Jamie Schneider at the senior from Lutherville, Maryland, getting the job done, stopping the run. It's a one goal game. Towson leads 6 to 5 here on the CAA Women's Lacrosse Championship presented by Primus. A 6-5 Towson lead here in Harrisonburg, Virginia, and the skies have cleared and a rainbow appearing over Centera Park, and a, a beautiful one at that, and really setting the stage and the scene for the semifinals here today on Lack Sports Network. Alongside Kelly Berger, I'm Tom Eschen on the call. Pretty cool there, Kelly. I'm sure you saw some rainbows in your day while on the campus there at JMU. I did. We were in the valley. We had figured out when the storm was coming from what angle when we were at practice and if it was going to cut our practice short or not. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what you were rooting for in that situation, depending on the day, right? <laughs> mm, yeah, I won't tell you. You can you can guess. <laughs> uh, we're under 10 minutes here in the first good game so far. Towson leading 6-5, to five, though Drexel getting a couple of the last few draw controls here, and they get possession once again. Just made it 6-5 to five before that break. Jamie Schneider is scoring her second of the day. So in terms of goals, it goes Harris, Grady, Bednarik, Lucy Schneider, but Jamie getting the job done. Another senior. Malamphy all over Harris there. Grady to Harris, has some space. Inside she goes, and I think she draws a shooting space as well. Yeah, there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one dodging going on and maybe not as much off-ball movement. And I think that's something that Drexel needs to focus on, that although they have, you know, the ball in the players that they want, the, in the sticks that they want, they need to continue to move as seven. Here comes Harris all the way in, and I think she got pushed beforehand. So she'll do and we'll reset. Harris, really good. She is the counter to Blair Perry on the Towson Tigers side. 19 of 35 free position goals this year. That's first on the Dragons. Loves that left side, doesn't I she, Kelly? Yeah. Yeah, and I haven't seen her get rattled, you know, e even in the, her hardest moments. There she goes, goes low and scores. She beats Merlo, and just like that, it's six to six. Harris is second of the day. A and that is a prime example. You know, she got shoved on the first eight meter. She jogged back to the start, and she knew she was going to get another opportunity. And she just had that mentality, I'm going to put this opportunity away. And she did just that. And she's an incredible player. Uh, from the looks of it, a good teammate, and, uh, you know, she gets those opportunities, she's going to take them. Leads the CAA in goals per game, draw controls per game. She's 10th in the nation in goals this year, 11th in goals per game. So you're, you're watching one of the best to do it here um, from box to box, really. Some critical scoring area to critical scoring area. She She's all over the field. But players like that don't come often, and they're fun to watch. No, yeah, and, you know, I love her story because she wasn't, always on the winning team. 
uh, she was more so on the losing team most of the time, and she just kept working and kept working and kept working, and it's paying off for her. I mean, they talked about how she's played almost every minute of her career, and she's finally getting that moment and taking that opportunity. Yeah, a cool stage here in the CAA semifinals, looking for a championship, an opportunity at one come Sunday. So once again, another draw control there for Drexel. Sort of tipping the scales back their way in that department here. Housen now leading that battle seven to six, but it's been Drexel winning the last three, I believe. But a turnover there, so Towson takes over. Yeah, we talked about the experience here for the Dragons of, of being here in the number one seed. They were predicted to finish third in their division of the four teams. So the, even before the season started, they weren't that highly thought of. Hofstra was picked to win, win everything, and, and they come in as the three seed, of course. But Drexel was, was picked to finish third, just scraping their way into the playoffs. Yeah, I'm not sure anyone believed in them other than themselves, and that's all that really matters. But, uh, it, yeah, it was interesting to see those preseason picks uh, when we look at it today. Looking to retake their lead, moving it around. And we've got a whistle there on the inside, so it'll be a free position. And Adela Hay, seven three goals this year in seven games. Looks like she's winding up, Kelly. Yeah, she looks like she's getting ready to step and shoot, step and rip. She does just that, spikes the stick. Towson leads 7-6. You can tell the way Hannah is set up here that she has her feet ready and she's just gonna take a couple steps in drag that stick from behind her and try and get some speed and essentially just beat the goalie. Um, and, and you know, I always admire those players that can do that. And uh, it, it takes a unique player to do that, but she knew she had the confidence. And I love the slamming of the stick at the end. That was that was awesome. A little swagger from the freshman from Pottstown, Pennsylvania. <laughs> you love it. In her eighth game, did not play against Drexel either time before this semifinal. So getting her fourth goal in a big spot here. Hey, she went in there, she did her job, she put a point on the board, and a big one at that. So now she, now she gets some uh, you water. gotta be happy for her. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. A 4-2 GPA in high school for Hannah, so she's also quite smart. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That that's better than anything. <laughs> that means she's taking some like she was taking some advanced courses, you know, getting herself ahead. I mean, I didn't, I didn't even think that was possible. <laughs> AP calculus, bio, <laughs> physics. Oh, man. She hit her spot there, lower right corner. Bednarik, two goals today, trying to dodge her way on the inside. Miller didn't let her. One player goes down, I didn't see who that was, Dietzel, and we have a whistle there on the inside. And a three seconds this time on the Tigers. I think it was the player that fell down. <laughs> Couldn't really do much about that. Yeah, that almost felt out of her control. But I, Drexel looks very, like they're cramping a little bit. You know, they're clogging that space. Uh, I feel like they need to spread out a bit more, give each other a little bit more room to move, especially the ball handler, because they are such good dodgers. Yeah, normally you see a little more space with Grady initiating from that right side, and she really hasn't been able to do much against this defense so far. The leading assister on this team has been held off the score sheet. But Harris continues to do what she does, and she draws a lot of fouls and makes a big impact. So she gets it here, looks like it's on the fan the outer rim, that's 12 meters. Goes down, gets back up again. They work it around, opportunity here, but Narek, a good job defensively there by Williams, but a whistle once again on the inside, shooting space. About three seconds, excuse me. <laughs> when in doubt, call three seconds, Tom. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I saw both hands go up, <laughs> but it was just I, I the three. I did too, I did too. I, I think you were right initially. Maybe the referee was confused. 
Five minutes to go, 7-6, Towson. Dragons trying to tie it up here. Bednarik scores, she does just that. Hat trick for Corinne Bednarik. It's 7-7. Seven, seven. Center hash here, she gets this opportunity. It, it almost is a little nerve wracking because you know you have such a huge opportunity being at the center hash. It doesn't happen often, but she protects her stick well, keeping that stick in front of her, using her wrist strength to snap the ball where she wants to take it. And, you know, hat trick on the day in, in a semifinal game. Uh, she's taking the opportunities that she has. And uh, Drexel, you know, I wouldn't say their offense looks fluid right now, but they're figuring out a way to make it work. Yeah, I don't know if they're, they played their best yet, and it's tied. So that's probably something that they'll talk about at the half and say, OK, um, depending on how these last 456 goes. But Bednarik, give her some credit. She did not score a point in the last game against Towson. So here she is with a hat trick here in the first 25 minutes. Great job there by Bell McHugh to pick up that ground ball in a sea of shirts, both black and white. And now the Dragons get it out with Simpson. Yeah, one that she couldn't even move her feet on. She, she just had to scoop it across the line and get out of trouble. Uh, that, that was impressive. Jill Batchelor well, calls uh, her a secret weapon. Yeah, it's almost like the stats that go unnoticed, you know? And that was a big ground ball. Harris into the middle, Schneider with scores. Drexel takes the lead back. This is Lucy, her first goal of the day. Harris at this point in the season knows that she was going to get two or three defenders sent her way, and she is playing that card very well. She's pulling out, she has her head up. She doesn't stop moving her feet. She threads the needle here. And this is a really good handle inside by Lucy. Uh, to turn and protect and do all of those things while then finishing, uh, this Drexel team is starting to feel it <laughs> clicking on a couple different possessions. And that celebration is just great. <laughs> the, the Rockette move there, I, I like the nod. <laughs> <laughs> they look just like them. Lucy Schneider with her 50th goal of the year, that's second on the team. And we alluded to it earlier, the, the sisters, the quadruplets, all playing Division I lacrosse. Really cool. And, and Lucy with the goal today, Jamie with two on the day, and, and there they are. And they all got, I mean, I guess got to, but I guess you make the best out of the situation. But they all were in like school at the same time last spring, and we're all home together, probably for the first time since high school, you'd imagine. Yeah, that picture is great when they're young. And then it, it sounds like a very supportive uh, group, too. You know, they're all cheering for each other, although they're all competing for the same thing. So it, it is something that's really unique just across, you know, college athletics, not just women's across. Yeah, it, it's really neat. And they actually, the Lucy and Jamie section got to go up against Georgia at U Albany for the first time earlier this season. So. That was a 15-10 Drexel win. I'm sure there's some bragging rights associated with that. And uh, that's definitely <laughs> something they'll be talking about for a long time, I'm sure. They're, they're seniors, and it, it's been cool to see, it, see them evolve over the years. What do you think the bragging rights are? Like, okay, if we win, you have to do the dishes sort of thing? <laughs> I mean, also, it sounds like also that it might be an apology. Like, I'm sorry I scored on you. Like, I didn't mean to. <laughs> you know, like sisters, you never, like, they go back and forth. You know, it's one end to yeah. another, two, two ends of the spectrum. Exactly. I, they're, I, they're probably pretty competitive. I've got three of them, so I, I know a little bit oh, of what yeah. that's all about. <laughs> you keep them in line. <laughs> Or vice versa. <laughs> exactly. So Drexel takes a lead, responding to Towson's run with one of their own. Four to one here, 417 to go. Drexel on top, eight to seven. Towson gets that draw control. A Malamphy win that time. See a rookie team member, the sophomore, transfer from Boston College. It's Natalie Miller, another one of those transfers, taking it into the offensive zone. It has felt pretty even here so far. I mean, we've seen some differences in the draw control, but then a team will give it away, and you see an, an offense a chance to get their set going and, and tie it up once again, seesaw battle. Yeah, it feels like they're trading possessions there. It, you know, what team can link a couple possessions in a row and have an impact 
that way and, you know, link a few goals together, that's going to be the team that might come out on top. So the back looks over the middle. The defense applied there by Rachel Warden. Another look in the inside. A tough catch and a whistle. That was Caitlin Thornton trying to make the catch, and she'll get awarded with a free position. So Caitlin, the older sister of Carrie. Carrie's got three goals. Caitlin, the senior. Carrie, the junior. So here's Caitlin with a chance here to tie the game once again. And she'll pass it out. Still halfway through this possession clock. The shot in the middle stopped by Bennett. Goalie of the year. Marshall with the try. And that's what make, that's what makes her so good. That that she made that save look very easy, and that is a very difficult save. I mean, it, it, it the ball is you know four or five yards away from you and coming hard at you, and she just makes it look easy. Uh, that was incredible. Yeah, that was a BB sent at her, right? Like that was that wasn't a, that wasn't some soft yeah. shot. <laughs> Yeah, that was hard. That was very hard and very scary if I was the goalie. <laughs> <laughs> now Drexel gets an opportunity to add to their lead here late in the half, and they do just that. It's Lucy Schneidereth once again. Schneidereth got four goals here in the first half, two for each. Something that I see that Drexel does a very good job with is they shoot before the pressure comes to them. And you see here, Lucy takes this dodge, and she does see that slide coming, and she releases that ball before she gets into trouble. Uh, it's almost like she catches the defense off guard, but also the goalkeeper. So uh, it, it, it's just a well done job, but also something that's really hard to teach. And the sisters seem like they have it down. <laughs> they, they sure do, and they're fun to watch for sure. You see Colleen Grady held off the score sheet today, but you've seen other players stepping up, and that's what has made this Drexel offense so good this year. I mean, Lucy Schneidereth, she's second in the CAA in goals per game this year, 377. So she's getting the job done and has been sort of just another one of those players for the Dragons that continue to be consistent over the course of the season. That's why they've won so many games, or 12 and 1 this year. I think it's one of those things with Drexel, you can stop one player, but you can't stop all of them. And if one player is maybe not having her best game or just not producing like she has in the past, there's another one just in the wings ready to step up. And there's another draw control win for Carson Harris. And they'll work it into their offensive zone. Grady trying to dodge her way inside. And, and Williams has had her gobbled up today. That just missed by Schneidereth. Nearing two minutes to play here in this first half. Nine to seven, Drexel on top. But Narek goes down. I think she was inside the critical scoring area when she was pushed by Malamphy. She'll get a free position. This is the first of two CAA semifinals coming your way tonight on Lack Sports Network. After this, it's JMU and Hofstra. But Narek on the inside had it ticked away and gobbled up there by Merlot, who will start Maybe a break here on the other end of the counterattack. Yeah, and as much as we thought that would be a fast break for Towson, you see how Drexel gets back so hard, so fast. They slow the break pretty quickly, and it's almost like Towson doesn't have a choice but to slow it down because they just don't have the numbers. Yeah, they watched the game film with Elon and said, yeah, you know, we, we try to get back on defense a little bit quicker than most, and that just came to fruition right there. I mean, the, the defense in the middle of the field was so important in that moment. Big possession here for Towson. And they give it away. Their seventh turnover of the half. They had a few early. Sort of calm things down, but that's a big one. Now Drexel gets one more opportunity with 60 seconds to play. Possession clock is off. Yeah, that's definitely, ooh, Sonia talked about it earlier in the week. You know, those are the ones that gave you the gray hairs. They, you want that back so bad. And you could see that the Towson players just, darn it. Like, we didn't want that to happen. But look at that. They got back and they took an offensive foul and, or defensive foul and, uh, they got it going the other way. Yeah, Good for them. Gabby Biondi taking a charge there right near the taking offensive charge, zone. Yeah. 30 seconds to go here in the half.
didn't give up on that play, Towson, or possession here in the half. <laughs> Lewak over the middle. The quick stick is good. Marshall second. Sliwak, yet another assist. Make it three for Sliwak today. You said it, Towson is not going away. Uh, you know, you could almost say that they would look at the clock there when they turned over the ball last and said, well, it's, only, it's okay, it's only a minute till half, but they continued to work and they made a count on the other end of the field. You gotta cover the tallest player on the field when she's in the middle of the eight meter. You have to have it stick to stick with her. She will be a threat. And uh, he, let's make it a game, why not? I, I mean, what a huge sort of momentum swing there, because it looked like Drexel was gonna have an opportunity to make it 10 to seven. And now you see Towson get that goal to make it nine to eight here late in, the, late in this half. Yeah, I, I actually had the thought when the ball was transitioning down the field and, and no hard feelings towards Towson, just, you know, they're gonna give up here for the last minute. They're just gonna go into the locker room, kind of roll over. They proved me wrong. They they got a big change that right on the sideline there too, where Towson was just screaming, hooting and hollering. That got him going, and um, it, that is a huge momentum change. Nine to eight, 14 seconds. See if we can get anything in the final moments here of the first half. A, a solid half, a fun one at that. As it been ad as advertised, as they say, and it is the Tigers who come out with it. It's Reina Del Tuva who will let the seconds tick off the clock. And a lot of applause there from the Towson sideline. They liked what they did in that first half. 9-2-8. It is the Drexel Dragons with a lead, but a pretty even half at that, Kelly. Yeah, I mean, any semifinal game is really fun to watch. You can tell that they're all hyped up. They're ready to go. It almost is like Towson, I don't know if they want this halftime right now. They're feeling <laughs> it. So we'll see what they talk about at halftime and see if they make any changes. And. I'm anxious to watch. The adjustments will be made. We'll see which ones are made on both sides of the equation. A fun half at that. Thornton with a hat trick for the Towson Tigers. On the other end, Ben Narek with one of her own. Four goals for Jamie and Lucy Schneiderith combined. The top seed, Drexel, leading four seed. Towson, nine to eight here on the CAA Women's Lacrosse Championship presented by Primus. Let's go back into the studio for halftime. Back at Centera Park in Harrisonburg, Virginia, the Drexel Dragons, the top seed here in the CAA Women's Lacrosse Championship presented by Primus. A one goal lead over Towson, the five seed, and a back and forth battle here, Kelly, in the first half. It was a good one. I mean, we saw a little bit of everything from both squads, some runs made. Yeah, we saw some, we saw the good and the bad, I would say, right? <laughs> and you have to expect that in the first half of any semifinal game, but you you felt like both teams kind of got a little taste of what they want to happen. Uh, and we'll see what happens post halftime after that good old halftime talk. Carly Merlo for the Towson Tigers established things early with seven saves for the Tigers, but Drexel able to get some momentum. Two goals, two assists from the player of the year, Carson Harris. Corinne Bednarik has a hat trick for the Dragons. Three assists for Nikki Sliwak for the Tigers. She has really initiated well. A hat trick for Carrie Thornton for the Tigers as well. Alongside Kelly Berger, I am Tom Ashton here on Lack Sports Network, set for the second 30 minutes and semifinal number one here at JMU. Kelly alluded to it before the break. She said that maybe Towson didn't want halftime to come, right? I mean, they were had, felt like they had the momentum despite being down a goal. Yeah, it, it quickly shifted there, but they definitely did have kind of the hooting and hollering going on, and um, uh, you want to continue that. I, I, I don't even think they have a locker room. I think they have a tent that they go to. So hopefully they were just in there quickly. They just took it as a small break, and they're going to come back out with it. And it is Towson who has possession here to start. Perry early on made an impact with a goal and assist. Didn't hear much from her in the second half of that first half. Half of a half. <laughs> Sometimes you tie yourself, tell, tie yourself in knots <laughs> with some words. The first 15 <laughs> minutes, she was more productive than the second 15. <laughs> Thornton gets a shot here on the arc and the free position opportunity. This game delayed by 75 minutes due to lightning. So that is why maybe if you're just tuning in, you're wondering what the timeline is like here tonight. The second game will start 
at least 45 minutes after the first. So we'll let you know as we get closer to that opportunity. You've been seeing a lot of these teams and teams across the NCAA. They they have almost plays or passes off of the eight meter. And this is unique. It's, it's fairly new for that to be happening. Um, you majority of the time saw someone run the ball in. Well, there she is, Perry. Her first goal of the half, her second of the day. And just like that, it's a new ball game tied up nine to nine. I, I would say when Blair gets the ball in the eight meter, she needs to go to goal. She knows how to finish that eight meter shot. And, and you know, she's gonna get hit in there. She's gonna get knocked around. So she has to understand that she has to take a second when she gets to that eight meter and really, you know, find space. And uh, that's what she did. And she's making this a tie ball game. CAA Rookie of the Year, the sixth Towson Rookie of the Year throughout their program history. That's the most in the CAA. This is sort of a different feel than, of course, the first two matchups in which Towson ran away with those ball games. And it feels like Towson, like we said, has seems to have that response here today. And I mean, you hear the cliche all the time in that, I'm not sure what they're, we'll see what they're talking about in a moment, but while they figure that out, we'll talk about this. Uh, Kelly, I mean, the, you can't beat a team three times in one season. Is that something you prescribe to? What, what's your belief in that? You know, I, I think it's always difficult to beat a team three times in a season, but it it's unique to our sport that we typically only play a team one or two times. In a lot of other sports, they see each other quite often. So it, it's not to say that that can't happen. And I honestly think that sometimes it's just put in our heads because that's what people say. So it's really who's the best that's going to show up that day and who's going to battle. Scramble for the ground ball there, won by... Number 27 in white, Jamie Schneiderth. Had a couple goals, now picks up another ground ball here today. Give her the draw control as well there. They had a scoreboard clock issue, so they were working on that. That was the brief delay. I was hoping it wasn't another weather call. <laughs> right. <laughs> a little bit of concern there, hesitation. We had some sun. We had a rainbow in the first half. So <laughs> we're going to try and keep that going. We've had it all. We've had it all. Our first look here at Drexel on the offensive end of the half. Harris, there's the shooting space call right there. Harris will get it from her spot on the arc. Two goals, two assists in that first half of play. The CAA Player of the Year, the senior from Grant Mills, Maryland. She's off with the whistle. She gets her way inside and she's wide of the cage. It's backed up by Dietzel. Dietzel tries to get her way inside and she does. Finds position off the pipe. She goes down, they'll play on. She gets into the crease there. It, it almost looked like in that possession that Drexel did make a slight change where there weren't so many cutters in the middle. There was a little bit more open space. It's able to get, uh, you know, two good one-on-one -on -one looks and just not finishing. But we'll see if they continue that because that was a change that we thought they would maybe talk about at halftime. Yeah, Colleen Grady, just two shots in that first half. She did not register a goal or an assist. There's only been three games when she hasn't scored multiple goals. She's the leading assister on this team, leading points per game player in the CAA. Fifth in the entire nation. Barry slips a little bit there, and that one is taken right away. What a play defensively there. Defense by, excuse me, Olivia LePage getting some time in there. Excuse me, McHugh got the takeaway, looking at the wrong roster. <laughs> <laughs> so Schneider's I, in there and back out. When you get that takeaway on a 1v1, that is, to me, a momentum change. That can hype a team up. I mean, that is hard to do, especially against Curry. And uh, let's see if they can capitalize on this opportunity. Well, McHugh had two cause turnovers last time against Towson. That's her first today, and now it translates here to a shot, and another stop by Merlo, starting the first, second half like she started the first. 
Yeah, Carly seeing the ball well, especially on those eight meters early on. That only can give the defense some confidence there. Still nine to nine, Towson getting the first one. And a lot of cheering there as a lot of pressure put on by Harris. And she gets the ball back for Drexel there on the clear. Towson, 90.6% clearing this year. That's 11th in the NCAA, but a lot of trouble there from the Dragons. Yeah, and it, it, it's almost as if Drexel is now deciding that they don't want to go into that transition that they were doing so well that kind of pulled them away early on in this game. Uh, and, and now they're slowing it down, kind of just feeling the ball. And you wonder if they're just trying to get a little bit more in sync with making them feel more like themselves. Here's that matchup we've been watching. Aaron Williams on Colleen Grady. Grady looking over the middle. Good pass, good finish. Schneider has got a hat trick. Lucy. There it is. And, and I would encourage Grady, if I could, you know, be in her ear to tell her. Don't worry about the goal right now. Try and do some other things. Those goals will come. You are a really fantastic player. And that's what she did. She dodged with her head up, knowing that there's a teammate out there that will get themselves open. I just got to feed them a good pass. And again, a good pass equals a good finish. And uh, excitement there with the hopping around. For Schneider, her 52nd goal of the year. For Grady, all time, her 92nd assist. That's second in program history. She's just two away from tying the all-time record here. 10-9, Drexel on top. Beatsell and Marshall. Like Benaric went for that and got fouled from behind. Benaric working hard in the circle coming into the day with 37 draws. Del Tuva making sure that got out of the stick of Carson Harris quickly. <laughs> good, just good protection too on Carson's part. I mean, she almost always feels those players around her and you think she's gonna get checked and then she pulls away and she makes the pass that's necessary. Mentioned this matchup between Williams who gets whistled there for the hold, and now she has to move behind Grady. This could be an opportunity. Pass there in the middle, squirts through some defenders, and Merlot comes out with it. She'll run around, but there's two white shirts around her, and eventually one of them's called for a whistle. So you'll give Merlot a little more space. Yeah, a forced pass there, I would say, by Grady. Maybe, you know, taking advantage of it. Last time was great, but not this time. So just see those opportunities. That ball hits the deck here. And the clear opportunity picked up there by Williams. And she'll get it over into the offensive area with Gabby Biondi. Did a good job making sure they weren't offside there, too. You can see those defensive players. They're pointing. They're shifting their sticks. Their sticks are in the in the passing lane. And it doesn't seem to matter there. They put away a goal. And that ties it up. It's Sleewak. Her first goal today goes in, going along with her three assists, 10 to 10. This is one of those low angle shots, and, and you do have to be careful here. Uh, but when you are a confident player and knowing that you can kind of thread the needle, she read the confusion that was happening on the crease there uh, with the shifting and the changes as we were exactly talking about that, and she capitalized on it. Um, you know, it's one of those ones where, as a coach, again, you're, no, 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 oh, okay, it worked out. Good job, Nikki. <laughs> Nikki's 30th goal of the year. She came into the day with 47 points. And of course, if you've been keeping an eye on Lack Sports Network over the last couple of days, you probably saw some men's games happening yesterday. And the men are watching today's game 
here today. Uh, the Drexel men at that. They won. They're in the championship game against Hofstra, and they sent this out. You can see watching LSN while watching some film. They've got their eyes on the women looking to also make it to the championship game. So the Drexel men getting their win. The women looking for theirs here today. It should be a fun men's championship as well. That's coming up here tomorrow on LSN as the number two seed Drexel takes on Hofstra. It should be a great battle. You've got Ryan Tierney on the pride side of things, one of the more dynamic scorers in the nation. And then a Drexel men's team who, second half of the year, you could say they probably were the best team in the CAA. So that's number two Drexel against the four seed Hofstra Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern from Schwartz Stadium on the island right here on Lack Sports Network. And the Drexel women trying to join the men there and you see here on the Towson sideline, some conversations happening after a timeout for the Drexel side of things. Interesting timeout there. And you've seen Jill Batchelor for Drexel at time take timeouts in situations like this, not necessarily letting things unravel, but maybe before they unravel, Kelly. Yeah, I, you know, we've had a couple coaches calls with her and each time, you know, we leave that coach's call, she's. It just she just makes you feel you know very calm and um and i can imagine that in that huddle just with her calm approach to things and just you know talking to the players rather than scolding them or screaming at them she just has a really good connection with them so i imagine she wants to call that time out she wants to reconnect with them make sure they know that you know this is our game plan this is what we want to do and she, she says, they just look at her and they say, okay, and they go do it. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty easy. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I, I do believe her, you know, just because when she's talking, that's kind of what I want to say. Okay, and just do it for her. Yeah, we alluded to the conversation they had about being the one seed. And they've also talked about their one loss. And that was to Loyola, a top 15 team or what have you, back on March 14th. They say they talk about that loss a lot, their only loss of the year. So I went to her, I'm like, well, you know, what do you, do you think about that at all? She goes, yeah, that's something that we sort of lean on, you know, in tough games or tough moments, say this is what we learn from that. And you always know you learn more from the losses than the wins. Yeah, exactly. You took the words out of my mouth. I mean, they can look back and probably learn a lot from that where things maybe didn't go well and it, it didn't maybe necessarily matter at the moment, but there's a loss on their schedule. A couple fakes and then the score, it's Grady. The assist on the goal a moment ago, and now the goal, she's on the board. Drexel takes we a one-goal lead. We haven't seen that from Grady yet. You can see that there was just a little bit of a pep in her step there behind the goal. Maybe she was told at that little timeout, you are good, you can make this happen. Just take that one-on-one -on -one with confidence, and you can see that there. She really dodged hard. She tiptoed around that crease and was able to get that ball past the goalie. Uh, we need to see more of that from her because she is such an impactful player on the attacking side. Yeah, we've seen Aaron Williams sort of close that off for her, that inside move all day long and make Grady go over the top, and that's caused more problems. Grady able to get the step inside there and doing a nice job at that, the senior from Glen Ridge, New Jersey. So two points in the second half for her. And out when running is Stack, who I think went off the pipe or off the stick of Bennett and another 1v1 opportunity Towson can't come through. Yeah, you saw there on that, you know, save that Zoe made, it, she jumps, she comes out of the cage big and she kind of is almost a distraction to the shooter and that's exactly what she was able to do. She was able to, even if she didn't get a piece of that, uh, she was able to really distract the shooter and kind of shock them and uh, make it difficult more difficult than maybe it needs to be. She's been credited with a save. So that's the second time this game. She's come out in that one-on-none situation you, you mentioned earlier, Callie, and she's come out on top. Yeah, she does it so often that we almost forget <laughs> to congratulate her on it. <laughs> Goalie of the year <laughs> for a reason. A try there for Sleewak, and it gets boggled up going in. So she'll run off, and Towson will regain possession. Or excuse me, and, and that yes, they will. That was another huge save on the defensive side. I mean, Carly there, that was a backhanded shot. I'm almost speechless because she got her stick down so quickly. That should have been a goal from Drexel, and she was able to save her defense in that little bit of commotion that was going on. 
That was Moreau, excuse me, who made the shot attempt there. The sun, you can see some of the shadows here in Centera Park. It's good news that the sun's back out. And now Towson, another opportunity to tie this game up. The seesaw battle continues here. Caitlin Thornton behind the cage. Here we go. She passes it behind the cage, excuse me. And two Sleewak. Now back out on top. There's Thornton. Sleewak continues to survey. And we have a whistle there on the inside. Sliwak will restart here from behind the cage. 25 on the possession clock here for the Tigers. So it, it does look like that Drexel has now changed their defense to more of a man-to-man -man here. And as I'm talking to you, I'm double-checking myself as I follow those defenders. <laughs> But that is a change-up um, that, you know, Towson has to now take on because Drexel was playing that zone defense. Nine on the clock here for the Tigers and Sleewak made a quick play earlier in a situation like this, trying to do it again. Delahaye, five on the clock. Delaway was open, but it's stopped by Bennett. That is trust from the defense. No one ran to that attacker because they knew that they were going to get shooting space. So they just said, OK, we're going to clear the space. We believe in our goalie right now. She's going to make this one v none save. And whether that was on purpose or by mistake, it worked out for Drexel. And another huge save by Zoe. A play on whistle here as Drexel retakes possession. 11 to 10 here in the second half. Top seed at 12 and one this season, ranked 10th in the inside the cross media poll. One of the best in the country in action. But Towson has been with them in lockstep. Towson providing some resistance on defense. Good catch there by Grady. Looking in the middle for Schneiderworth. Schneiderith. And Harris run it down. No, she can't. Good defensive possession there for the Tigers. 20 minutes to go. Towson has another opportunity here to, again, string string a couple of offensive sets together. And, and like you said, Tom, back and forth, back and forth. We, they've seesawed back and forth. What team can kind of string two or three possessions together and tire out that opposing defense. Towson, you can see, settling things down a bit. His pace is slowed a bit here now. So Drexel got a few of those transition goals early on. Those have been a little harder to come by in the second half. Yeah, and I would almost imagine that Towson would like to play against a man-to-man -man defense rather than a zone. They are much more of an offensive set where they they like the one-on-one. -on -one. They like to use the speed through the dodge rather than the pass. Sonia LaMonica believes that the offensive depth for this team, in addition to their speed, is as good as it's ever been, which has a lot. She's had a lot of good teams in her tenure. For sure. Another foul there. Perry tried to go in out there on the inside by Simpson. A couple of whistles. Perry is just so tough to handle. Some, you know, she gets ahead of steam going towards the cage. It's tough for her to stop her. You can see sort of that what an athlete she is too. She gets yeah, it on not the only that, she throws her she throws her body into everything that she does. She treated that like an eight meter play. Instead, it was a 12 meter free position type. And Perry with a hat trick here to tie things up 11 to 11. What a move there, Kelly. Yeah, she takes this with her strong right hand and really finds the top of the net. Hard shot with all of her momentum going forward. That'll make a difference.
18-29 to play. We are all tied in semifinal number one here in Harrisonburg. Eleven to eleven. Yeah, the clouds might look a little dark, but the sun is shining here over Centera Park at the CAA Women's Lacrosse Championship presented by Primus alongside Kelly Berger. I am Tom Eschen, and what a game we have for you. What a finish is in store here. Eleven to eleven between the top seed Drexel and the Towson Tigers, who made it here through a play-in game on Wednesday against Elon. Right. It doesn't look like their legs are affected whatsoever. They do not. They look very comfortable here in Centera Park on this natural grass. We'll see how comfortable Hofstra looks against the home team JMU in our second semifinal of the day. But for now, we've got 18 minutes to punch one ticket to the championship on Sunday. Don't forget, Drexel beat Towson twice over the course of the regular season. 20 to eight back on April 13th, a 17 to seven win on April 23rd. Today has been a different story. Harris in the middle. She gets checked away by Malamphy. Another dodge in the middle, that time by Bednarik, stopped by Merlot. A whistle there coming out of things. but I think they'll play on. I haven't had any cards yet here today. No, no yellow cards, no green cards. Green, green card, of course, is a non-engagement foul, but at the same time, we haven't had any of that. No advantage, player up situations. Yeah, yeah and, and a little surprising just because we feel like that we get that every game, but I would say thinking, looking back, each team has been playing pretty clean, you know, clean and controlled. So it doesn't call for it. Drexel with 25 fouls to Towson 16 over the course of the game. Williams now here for Towson as they get possession after all of that. Brief stoppage as you near the midway point of this second half. See some teams getting ready there in the background. Looks like Hofstra, the blue. Work it over to the left side. Inside, Perry scores again. Four goals for Blair Perry, the sophomore from McDonough. The catch and the control inside is very underrated. It is very unique for a player to have a really good stick inside. And when I say unique, I don't mean that it's unheard of, but there are certain types of players that can really handle the pressure inside, turn, and then finish and find the shot, find the goal. Everyone can shoot, but can you find the back of the net? And Blair can definitely find the back of the net. The CAA Rookie of the Year showing us all why here in a big moment as the Tigers have taken a 12 to 11 lead. Perry, a IL top 100 incoming freshman after 2019 season, and she went to McDonough, and you know the track record there. They had 198 straight wins, 85 and one in her four years. A winner. I would say that Towson is more familiar with the position that they are in now than maybe Drexel, all right? I mean, Drexel hasn't been here that often that many years in a row so this is new to them uh, winning is not new to them this year but in the past years so Towson's been in the tournament quite often Drexel maybe not as much but that doesn't mean each team's not going to battle to the end but it's it's interesting to watch what plays out here from maybe a familiar familiarity standpoint yeah absolutely Drexel's first CA tournament appearance since 2016, they were the four seed that year. They lost to JMU. Ironically enough, the other three times they appeared in the CEA tournament was against Towson, 2011, 2012, 2013. Each of those games they lost, they were the four seed, and each of those games were close. So this holding true to form in postseason, we'll see if it continues that trend in, in Towson getting close wins. This is Lucy Schneider. She has a Hat trick today. Working around now behind the cage. Harris. 
guarded there, up top by Miller. Back to Harris, inside, and she gets fouled. So there she goes, taking her spot with some attitude on that arc. A physical play there, played by Miller. Harris has two goals, two assists today. And she go too early? She went too early. Tried to time up the whistle and the false start turns it over. That That's one of the ones where as a player you want to just have it back. And sometimes you can let that really affect you. I, I would bet that she is not going to let that affect her. She's going to continue to play hard. Uh, but that is an, an unfortunate situation that you want to get back. Yeah, the good thing about being a player like Harris is that she plays on both ends of the field. I mean, she's all over the place. So, <laughs> I mean, she can go and do something else to sort of shake that off quickly. Exactly. And a turnover there for the Tigers. An unforced There's one at that. unforced errors. Mm-hmm. Halfway through this second half, 12 to 11, Towson on top. Hear the wind whipping on the broadcasts. Thunderstorms moving through earlier, delayed this game by about an hour and 15 minutes. But so far, the skies have been sunny. Hopefully it'll stay that way the rest of the night. You see some teams getting ready. That's JMU, this side of the pitch. Looking forward to their matchup with Hofstra. That should be a really good nightcap, a couple of rivals there. Snyder looks to dodge, out to Grady. Works her way inside, turns, fires, stopped by Merlo. Merlo's double-digit saves, number 11 today. There's just a lot of bodies in the middle of the eight meter. I want to pause them and I want to stretch them out, give each other some room. Grady's taking that shot from really far out and that's easy for any goalie to track there. Uh, I, I haven't seen this with Drexel, at least in the, in the past. So we'll see if maybe there's a timeout in their future where they talk about that. Merlo's last double-digit save game came on March 20th. That was against St. Joseph. So they've played a, a more than a month, almost two months since then. And today, in, in a huge moment, she's got double-digit saves today. Three times, 11 saves, make that four today. I think she knew she had to have a big game in order for them to come out on top. Towson with an opportunity here to go up a couple of goals, something they haven't done today. A big physical play there, no call initially. It looked like Perry with a big hit on Edgerton. I, I don't know which way you would call that. <laughs> it seemed almost simultaneous. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's maybe why the whistle was a bit delayed. They weren't sure they, who to call it on. Perry, like a bull in a china shop, trying to go to the cage now, gets it behind. Sliwak. 20 seconds to go now here on the possession clock. Marshall, look at the dodge, finds some space and scores. They call it off. So they don't give her the continuation after that. So the goal taken off the board and they'll get a free position, but no goal. Here's Marshall, bounces it in. Towson takes a two goal lead. Marshall's got a hat trick. Lindsay wasn't gonna let that opportunity that she had, which I, I'm still maybe a little confused about that call, but either way, she didn't let it bother her. She had center hash there and she just put it in the back of the net. It's it's really one of those opportunities that you can either let it affect you or continue to push through and make it count. Marshall, the freshman from Columbia, Maryland, and she was initially committed to Penn State, and we asked Zoe LaMonica about that, and she goes, oh, we got her? Heck yeah, when she felt, heard that <laughs> moment. And she's, what a difference maker, an all-CA rookie this year, two-time rookie of the week. 
<laughs> you know, it just sounds way cooler when Sonia says it because of her cool Australian <laughs> accent. <laughs> that, always, that always helps. Uh, meanwhile, her goalie, the sophomore Carly Merlot, has been outstanding and a big reason why Drexel only has 11 goals right now and two in the second half. Merlot standing on her head at times. 11 saves today here, Kelly. She's been tracking these shots against the best, one of the best shooting teams in the country. Yeah, from the start, I mean, the first whistle, the first shot that she saw, she made a tremendous save. That gave her the confidence, and then she carried that through. We really haven't seen a bad play by her. She's making saves that she shouldn't make. And then, you know, there are going to be goals that are scored on you, and that's something that you have to realize as a goalie. You're not going to, you know, always have a shutout. Uh, very rarely will you, but she is making the saves that she is not supposed to, and then, you know, rally the defense up from that. What a difference between the last time her and the Tigers played this Drexel team. She had, in the, on the 23rd of April, the last time they played, she had 17 goals allowed and just five saves in that game. So what a what a difference here today in, in a big moment when she needed to the most. Big players step up at big moments, right? And she is uh, definitely stepping up for her team. Yeah, it's been impressive to watch. So now Towson with a two-goal lead, and we've talked about that on switch for the Dragons, and I don't think they've hit it yet. And I think Kelly comes down to transition. They really haven't gotten anything done in transition here this half. Yeah, I'm not sure Drexel has felt in sync this entire game. I think they're if it continues on this way, I, I fear that they might walk away from this game saying, what what just happened because i don't feel like they've connected or they've gotten a feeling of a, a good groove going um so and part of that groove is the transition like you just said and so um towson is doing what they wanted to happen they're slowing the ball down not getting in a track meet and drexel needs to counteract on that and just say you know what we're going to do what we we know we're good at 13 to 11 here 12 33 to play after the timeout brief whistle here from the official. They'll have a brief conversation as well. Draw controls today. Drexel's won 15 of them. Towson's won 10. Towson's also turned it over 10 times. Drexel, 7. Marshall and Dietzel here in the middle. Dietzel, a three-time captain senior here for the Drexel Dragons. As we hear some more conversations going on here. Towson had too many players on the field there, apparently. That's not good. <laughs> Can't do that. I think they counted him up and said, OK, we'll just play on. And so Towson not penalized for that, as they didn't start play. So. Whoever wasn't supposed to be there got off the field. <laughs> Here we go. That one flung into the air, and now it's a battle. Grabbed there by the Dragons. A great ground ball by Haley Simpson. Came into the day with 39 draw controls, a junior from Ellicott City, Maryland. Drexel then turns it right back over again. So like you said, Kelly, they're just not in the normal flow, and it seems like Towson's made it difficult on them up and down the field at times today. Yeah, that's very unlike them, what just happened. But uh, uh, with that said, I would never count them out. Uh, they are a team that fights to the end, and two two goals in women's lacrosse is nothing. We've seen that, uh, you know, done very quickly. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, these teams here in – in the league, I mean, for turnovers wise, not a ton have been made. It's been a fairly clean game throughout. It's just a matter of one team capitalizing, and so far, it's been Towson with the lead, 13 to 11. Sleewak surveys. Halfway through this possession clock now, and they'll settle in and get into their offense. Here comes Perry all the way in. The whistle blows. They'll count it. Perry, five goals today. Towson's got a three-goal lead with 11 minutes to go here. 
you could tell per Perry read that defensive confusion. They were trying to get, you know, the defense settled. They wanted certain personnel on her. And she said, oh, no, I'm not waiting for you. I'm just going to goal. And she, you give her that space. You give her that place to run. Those hands are free. And she's going to take every bit of her body and to finish that goal. And she did just that. And that's why she has five goals today. And she's coming off a game against Elon in which she had her season high of seven points, four goals, three assists. Right now, she's got five goals and one assist, close to getting to that season high. You wonder if because they, you know, took her off of that midfield role and put her more on the attacking side, she's been able to kind of evaluate her play when the ball is not on her end and really just say, okay, that possession, I did this. This is the possession I need to change doing this. And just slows her mind down a little bit. Uh, Sonia talked a lot about that. It looks like it's really benefiting her. Yeah, I mean, you, you see some of these players that do everything up and down the field, but that's not easy. That Those are completely different. Those are different humans, you know? And, and, and sometimes, especially Perry, who's a young sophomore, I mean, she knows how to score. And you give her an opportunity. She can be really, you can be really, really, really good at that. Uh, you know, you can be good at other things, but she uh, you can tell the nose she has for the cage. And by putting her there, I mean, it's working for Towson here, and it's worked the last few days. Towson, once again, getting possession here. They'll take their time, part of their strategy today. Yeah, as they should. I mean, they can wear this clock down. Now, I wouldn't say to play safe, quite yet. I, I would say just play your game and their game is to you know, keep the ball in their stick. And so let's see if they continue to do that. Marshall over to Stack. It's Lewak. Lewak to skip to Marshall. They'll work it out and slow it down once again. Drexel defense getting tested here now. Less than 10 minutes to play. Zlewak into the middle, gets batted away. A nice job of getting her stick in there was Rachel Warden. First team all CAA player, number one in ground balls per game in the CAA as well. And we have a whistle. I think there might be a green card to come out of this. And that's exactly what there is. Green cards issued for non-engagement fouls in women's lacrosse, a failure to move two meters away for free positions or a false start as well in two meters. And if it's egregious enough, a green card will be issued. So this will be a one minute to go here. One minute releasable penalty, 9.37. Yeah, you, you don't want to play too safe here. Like I said, uh, you know, 10 minutes, nine and a half minutes is a long time in women's lacrosse. And if, you start to play too safe, sometimes you fear that your team becomes too lackadaisical, too nonchalant, and then they make silly turnovers, uh, like Towson almost just had. So you wanna still have the you know, foot on the pedal, go, and, but just be smart. So it's our first card situation of the day, our first man up situation of the day as well. We'll see how Towson chooses to approach this. around. That's bounced into the stick of Delahaye. Thought she had an opening. Closed off. Good job by McHugh. It bounces its way through now, and there is the turnover. Right about 10 seconds to go here in the penalty. Yeah, and Drexel's strategy sh here should be get it down to the other end safely and let's get all even. Let's uh, make sure we have all of the personnel on the field that's necessary. There you go. That penalty just released now. So we are at even strength, 8.28 to go, 14 to 11. Talked about that on switch for Drexel. Now, now would be the time. We've seen them do it before. I, I don't doubt that they, they can't, but let's, let's see if they, it's, little too late. I mean, even just this performance from Towson just shows you, you know, what experience in, in these places for a program mean. I mean, some of these Towson players don't have it, but 
you know, Sonya LaMonica and her staff deserve a lot of credit for just getting them prepared for a moment like this. Yeah, and we've said it all along, Tom. We, we do think Towson's a really good team, and uh, maybe they're just, we're late bloomers. Brady goes high and scores, cuts the lead to two. Her second goal of the day. So they kill off the penalty and they get a goal here to cut this lead to two. Colleen Grady, two goals and assists. She leads the CAA in points per game. She's trying to lead her team to a comeback on LAC Sports Network. Welcome back to the CAA Women's Lacrosse Championship presented by Primus alongside Kelly Berger. I am Tom Eschen. We've got a good one for you here. The top seed Drexel on the ropes against the Towson Tigers who lead 14 to 12, but right before the break, Colleen Grady getting a big goal to get Drexel within two here, Kelly. And this is a big draw control out of the timeout. Yeah, two goals. This might be the biggest draw control there has been all game. And setting the tone, who's going to get this possession? And there it goes, goes Drexel's way. Carson Harris, that's who it goes in the stick of. The player of the year. This is the time for her to come up big. And a yellow card, our first yellow of the day, issued on Towson. I didn't exactly see what happened, and here we go. The stick too close to the head of Bednarik. Two-minute penalty now. Yeah, whenever that stick comes entirely too close to the ponytail, they blow it right away. They want to make sure they keep that game safe. But this could be a huge momentum change. They got the draw control after that goal. They now are man up. Let's see what they do here. Olivia Malamphy will sit down. She's a big part of what they do on defense as well. So keep that in mind if, you, if you're watching too. 7.30 to play. Brady looking over the middle. There's a skip to Schneiderith. Schneiderith on the inside. And a whistle. Free position coming up here for the Dragons. We saw the skip pass a lot in previous games. We haven't seen it that much this game, so you wonder if that feels more natural to them. It's getting them in sync. Jamie Schneider with score. She's got a hat trick. Cuts the lead to one. You had that feeling when she was on that eight meter. She was ready to go. I, I had the feeling for her that she was going to put that away. She got her stick free. She kind of baited that defender there, tucked underneath and got around the defender and the goalkeeper. And they're not done yet. It, it, they're down by one, they're not done. So both of the Schneider sisters with hat tricks here today in the CAA semifinals as seniors. They've certainly done their part today and, and we talk about the senior laden group and this is where that really comes into play in a tough spot. Drexel's made up of this group that's played together for years now. And this is where the seniors step up. The Schneiders are seniors. Harris is a senior as well. Grady, I mean, this is this is where the experience comes into play. The list goes on, and they are, you know, their best pals, all of them, on and off the field. You can see that little sisterly hug that they gave. Um, let's see if they come together here. They, they're ready to battle. Uh, it, it's going to be a good finish. The penalty released, but it's Drexel who gets possession anyway it's Harris she might just go right to the cage here and she gets fouled going in I think she was in the critical scoring area so that aggressiveness might pay off you have to know that when she has the ball the mindset for her is go to goal and she is not scared of any swinging stick or body that's in front of her that's her mindset so you have to find a way to stop her she's got two goals to assist today this is where she makes her money right here Looking for the tie, and she gets it. Drexel ties it, 14-14. A hat trick for Carson Harris. You know, I was nervous at first because she looked over to the sideline kind of asking her coach, should I not shoot this? I was gonna say, heck no, shoot this. This ball's in your stick, you're at an eight meter. That is your hash mark. You know what to do there, Carson, and she did just that. And uh, she made it a tie game. It's, again, nothing, nothing, clean slate, Let's see what happens. I mean, Carson Harris, the 2021 CAA Player of the Year. You see the hat trick, you see the two assists. She also has six draw controls today. 
two ground balls and a cause turnover. So Harris is doing it all just as she has all season long. This is why we told you how good she was. This is why she was recognized as the player of the year. I just want to be inside of that huddle when Jill is talking to them. You said that she was, you know, pumping them up at the last break. And I just want to know, like, what can she say? What does she say to really get these kids to connect and believe when maybe there's a time that the game is just slipping away from them? They they turn it around and it's a tie game. And this is I mean, you see the dancing in the huddle. <laughs> They're having a good time. Yeah, they talk about the on switch quite a bit. She said she saw that in practice, and then we've seen that against this Towson team in their two matchups earlier this season, Callie. I mean, the 28 win, the 17 to 7 win. In those games, they were tested at times, maybe not as much as today, but over the course of the season, you've seen them flip that switch, and it comes in moments like we just saw in that huddle. And here you see the proof in the pudding. Here's where it's happened, and now we're seeing it before our very eyes. Yeah, they just kind of go on runs that are silent but deadly. Yeah, all of a sudden you look at the score and they're up by 10. And you're like, wait, how did that happen? And I, I mean, and I'm someone watching it, so I'm sure the other team feels that way too. They know how to connect with each other and then they build each other up. And they really rely on every single person on the field, not just one. It is the third time they played each other this season. And Joe Batchelor said, yeah, we're not the only conference. We're not the only team that's played another three times this season. She's touched on some of her colleagues and asked them, you know, we've seen this happen all over the country this year. And they've spoken about what it takes to beat a team and certainly getting tested today. And here's that wide shot we have. You can see the difference in the sidelines right now. A little different demeanor. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, and again, it's still a ton of time. I know I keep saying that, but there, that's a lot of time. A lot, a lot of different things can happen. I mean, I'll, I'll watch this all day long, Kelly. This has been a lot of fun here today. <laughs> that's not a good sign. That's not a fun sign. Blair Perry goes down, clutching her knee here for the Tigers. She seems to be in a lot of pain. That's Sonia LaMonica right out there as Perry continues to squirm on the ground. That's Sonia LaMonica right there. Perry has five goals and an assist today. We get another look, just came down a little funny on that knee. It, yeah, we can only hope that she's gonna be okay and that it was just knees knocking there. Uh, it, it's definitely scary at, at any moment. And so um, we hope that she is okay. She's someone who plays, you can just see it. I mean, she plays so hard and she's just what you would describe. And she's a sophomore, a young player, a gamer, you know, you know and, and has come in and, and really taken over. And, and in her freshman year, she led the team with 14 goals in those six games they played last year. And then came back this year and doubled that down with that CEA Rookie of the Year honor. So she does limp off. She is putting some weight on that leg, which is which is a good sign. Yeah, I have no doubt that she'll go off and get evaluated. And if she is OK, I, I would have to think that she's going to come back out. She's a fierce competitor. You, you just hold your breath, you know, when it comes to knee injuries. And it looks like she's putting weight on, which is a great sign. But I mean, I, I turn you see so, so many of these players and we will talk. We talk about it with these coaches all the time. This one's coming back from injury. This one, we lost this one for the year. And it's sort of the other side of things. And with, of course, COVID going on as well, I mean, just being out there and appreciating that more, I think it's really, really hit home this year. Yeah, it has for sure. And and I know knee injuries all too well. I've done both my ACLs and it is not a fun process, but we always say, if you play sports hard enough, like she does, you 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 might get injured, but she, she gives it all her all. So yeah. we wish her the best. Good to see her using both legs when she walked off. We'll, we'll for send sure. her our prayers and hopefully she's okay. And got 6-12 to go. They, they need her down this stretch. Looks like someone's going to have to step up. Yeah, we'll see. I, I mean, like we've said all along, both sides of the field have tons of weapons. So who's going to step up in this moment? Here's Caitlin Thornton. Her sister Carrie's got a hat trick today. Slewak looking over the middle. Long skip pass to Marshall. And we got a three-second call. Free position coming for the Tigers. 5.47 to go. 
Marshall's got three today. She'll run in, dodge her way inside. A whistle there on the inside. We'll reset and do it again. Yeah, at any time if that, you know, shot is affected by the foul, they will reset you and give you another opportunity. Here's Marshall. Again, goes high, stopped by Bennett High. Bennett makes her sixth save here today. Here comes Jamie Schneider, a hat trick here today. Now she'll work it in the clearing game. They get it in the offensive zone successfully here into the stick of Harris. There's players you feel comfortable when the ball's in their stick. Harris is one of them, Grady as well, for this team. And I, I think that that's another example of the experience they have. Yeah, and it feels like they've been transitioning the ball their entire career, so they know how to do it. Up fake, and then low goes Schneider, but she's stopped by Merlo. Not faked out at all. Merlo, her 12th save. Not faked out at all. I mean, leaving her feet for the fake, and Merlo did not even move and then was able to track the ball down low. That was incredible and that was a gigantic save. And a gigantic transition opportunity off the crossbar there by Sliwak. A really crisp break there from Towson. Great passing up the field and Sliwak was on the doorstep. The pipe, goalie's best friend. End to end. Goalie's best friend, attacker's worst enemy. <laughs> she, you know, it's just, it's unfortunate, but it's part of the game. Sounds like someone that's been, that's happened to before, <laughs> Kelly Berger here. For sure, for sure. <laughs> Less than four minutes to play, tied up at 14. Heavy Mona back in there, Sliwak behind the cage, skips it over. Norton. 45 on the possession clock, halfway through. A look inside to Mona, who couldn't get much on that, and Bennett is there. Another stop by Drexel. Tom, is this gonna come down to the last possession? <laughs> it, that would only be fitting in a game like this. Semi-final, <laughs> just number one of the night. We got another one coming up after this with JMU Hofstra which should be as good, if not better. The pass there picked off by Gabby Biondi. Excuse me, that was not Biondi. That was number 18, Sammy Chenoweth. What a perfect person to do just that. Fifth in the nation in cause turnovers. Number one in the CAA. And that pass picked off by Carson Harris. What team is going to get the ball down on one side of the field and just, you know, get possession, gain possession? You got to assume that these middies are a little tired here, so take an extra breath. You don't necessarily have to take the last shot, and nor do you have that option right now with the shot clock, but just feel the ball in your stick and almost look at each other and say, we're okay, take a deep breath. That middle 30, what a battle there. I mean, just you can feel the tension and knowing how valuable each possession is. Each team fighting for it here. Grady on the inside, shot stopped by Merlo. How about Carly Merlo once again? Yeah, you are not getting anything low in front of her feet by her tonight. She is tracking that ball perfectly. She's throwing her body in front of it if her stick's not getting down soon enough. And I mean, she, in, in my eyes, she's been one of the best players on the field. She's been outstanding, 13 saves today. That's her season high. And a timeout here for Sonya LaMonica and the Tigers here with 1.33 to play. They've got uh, a couple dozen seconds in between them and the shot clock. As Drexel has made this run to come back and get back in this thing. And what a battle it's been down the stretch here, Kelly. I mean, what a, what a run for Drexel, though, to, to tie this up at 14, so big. Yeah, I mean, it, it was never a thought that they would go away, but it was a fear that maybe 
one team would exhale for a half a second and that team, the other team would take advantage. And that hasn't been the case. Both teams have been battling back and forth. They've both played from behind at some points in this game. And that's what makes it so exciting. 13 saves today for Carly Merlo for the Towson Tigers. That is a career high for her today. And the biggest moment for her of her career. I mean, she's a sophomore, so last year as a freshman didn't get an opportunity to play in a postseason. And now here she is with such a big performance today. And then there's an update of what it looks like on the sideline for Perry, getting that knee wrapped up, which is a good sign for Towson. We'll see if maybe she'll come in for this possession. I don't know, running out of the midfield. Yeah, I mean, you never know. She might just have said, okay, I feel okay, let's try it. This is my opportunity. Uh, and I, I trust that those, you know, trainers on the sideline are checking her out, making sure she is okay. There is a potential that this could go into overtime too. So you want to keep her kind of loose and warm if they don't necessarily need her in this last possession. I'm glad it's not a serious injury, number one, and that she's running around. Unfortunately, it looks like she is in some pain. It's the, the explosive style, Callie, the way she plays. And it, I mean, that's tough, you, you know? I mean, we've seen her do it so many times. I mean, you're trying to cut on something that's already a little shaky. You get a little nervous around that. Yeah, and also I think it's, it's a mental game too, right? I, you know, she's worried about it. We know the history of knees and how scary those injuries can be. So it's, it's almost, you just wonder, that doesn't look like a good sign. It looks like she is in a lot of pain and that does really hurt her. And so what I would say is, you know, you've got teammates that can step up. She's done so much in yeah. this game, you know? And so to just put that trust in your teammates and, um, you know, just cheer them on. You sort of see what it means to her, you know, in that moment of yeah. sort of realizing. But at the same time, that's what the teammates are for. And they'll have a little more energy, maybe knowing that she's not out here, you know, and saying, okay, let's do it for, let's do it for Blair. Yeah, exactly. Towson, that last goal by Perry was their last goal with 11 minutes to go in the second half. Drexel held Towson scoreless for about 20 minutes in their first meeting this year. So now it's been about 10 minutes in this meeting here today. All they need is one, at least at this point. You see the Hofstra team on their feet there behind the, behind the field. They're watching closely. Anxiously waiting. This is Carrie Liucci for the Tigers. Hasn't gotten too much run in here today. She'll take it behind the cage. A little bit of a different set here from the Tigers. Sliwak from the top this time, inverted. Mona. Yeah, they have those, they have the two players inside that keep floating back and forth, kind of looking to see if they can pop open. Uh, looks like the Drexel team here is in that back in that zone, so they're throwing different things at Towson, seeing how they're going to react. Here's Sliwak, Sliwak trying to get it inside to Liuchi. 18 on the clock, 38 on the game clock. Marshall. Good defense by Towson. Here's Stack. Stack looking over the middle. Five on the possession clock. She forces it in. The jump shot for Marshall is off the mark. Picked up there by Schneiderith and a whistle. The possession clock expires. Game clock still rolls here because the ball went to the offense, the other team. So we have 12 on the clock. 14-14. The ball trying to work its way through the middle. Liucci is there. The whistle will go the way of the Tigers. Three, two, one last launch. Almost close to there. Bennett wasn't looking, <laughs> but we go to overtime. Whew. Bennett didn't Ooh. see that last shot, Kelly, but we've got overtime here in semifinal number one. Doesn't get much better than this, does it? No, it doesn't. And, uh, you know, who doesn't want extra lacrosse? on Final Four Championship Weekend for the CAAs. It's pretty exciting. Welcome back to Santerra Park. Semi-final number one of the CAA Women's Lacrosse Championship presented by Primus alongside Kelly Berger. I am Tom Eschen. The overtime period about to start. The Drexel sideline making all sorts of noise on their side of the equation as they have pretty much all game. And like you said, Kelly, it's a little bit of a difference when it comes to philosophies. Drexel 1-0 in overtime games this year. 
That was against St. Joe's back on February 24th. So that was when they were just sort of figuring themselves out. Feels like forever ago. February 24th was a very long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> So they will play two three-minute halves. Next goal does win, no matter what. So this, I know I said it a couple draws ago, that that was the biggest draw there was. This is actually one of the biggest draw controls there is. And looks like they're giving the ball to We'll find Drexel. out what just happened, because the biggest draw control just went the way of the Drexel mm -hmm. Dragons. Wow, that is a huge call. I don't believe there was an outstanding penalty beforehand, unless we saw there was one that happened during the break that we didn't see. But it's gonna be Drexel who starts here. Three minutes to play, overtime period has commenced. Towson was receiving of a green card there. We talked about the green card earlier on in the game. That was also given to Towson. And they were just given one here. That's a delay of game on Towson there off of the overtime period. So it must have been either a, a conversation, too long of a conversation or whatever. I'm not sure what happened, but Drexel goes a man up nonetheless here. The best scoring offense in the CAA with an advantage here for a minute to start the overtime period. They work it around. Schneiderith. That Narek to Jamie. Here is Harris. Back to Bednarik, wide open. Excuse me, that was Dietzel who gets hit as she went in. And we've got a yellow card, so yet another player up for these Drexel Dragons. Dietzel went in hard and she got hit pretty hard too. I, I mean, I, I don't mean to take away from this offensive set, but it, you know, it's again another opportunity that the, I think we got a tip on that. The goalie got a tip on that. But it's another opportunity to just take an extra second, put it around the goalkeeper, and finish strong. Let's see if she can redo that one. Dietzel with a chance to send her team to the championship. There she goes. She takes the shot and she makes the shot. Drexel's heading to the championship. The senior from Doylestown, Pennsylvania, scoring her 15th goal in the season here in overtime. The Dragons advance and survive 15-14 over the Tigers. And in these, these type of games, you never want a team to walk away as the loser because they just both played so hard until the end. So, you know, as much as you know, Drexel's excited right now, and Towson is disappointed. You gotta tip your hat to Towson. They fought hard. They came in as the fifth seed. But, you know, they've been in Harrisonburg for the longest amount of time so far, just working their butts off trying to get to that championship game. And it didn't pan out for them, but a really well-fought game. Dietzel, a three-time captain for these Dragons. And we've heard Jill Batchelor say, she's not as high in the stat sheet, but she gets the job done, either with her play or with her voice. And here she is in the biggest moment getting it done here today. Yeah, and those are the players that you really are excited for when they have that opportunity. You know, as a senior, a three-time captain, she has gone through the struggles of the Drexel Dragons, right? When they were not the top of the top. And now she's seen her work pay off and that just, even just talking about it gives me chills, and uh, that's really awesome to see. So it's going to be the Drexel Dragons' first appearance in program history. We have to applaud the Towson Tigers, and what a battle. I mean, they had gotten dominated against this Drexel team the first two times they played.